Hi guys, welcome to another boning analysis video. So today we'll be you know, looking at uh, a YouTuber and uh, quite, um, I find like I quite actually like his uh, videos. Uh, it's the 220 average bowler. So I think there is, this is his side channel. Let me try and look for his main channel. Give me a moment, 220 average bowler. Okay, let me drag it over. Right, so this is the his main YouTube channel, 220 Average Bowler, and this is actually his side channel, Average Vlogs, where he actually does a lot of uh, interesting, like challenge videos, like bowling, uh, like with a uh, eight pound ball, a lefty challenge. He bowls regionals. He bowls in Crocs, eight pound ball, and uh, Heelys. It's all a lot of interesting content. And like he mentioned in the vlog, it actually does cost him quite a fair bit to actually make that content. And he's also a fantastic bowler as well. He scores a lot, right? He like he, he bowls quite a few 300s. And he's looking to step out his game to go into the like the regional PBA regional tours and maybe even the food the 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 main the like the bigger tours, right? Other than the regional. So uh for People who are not aware in the PBAs, if you are not looking to get into competitive, you go for your regional tour first, where the price money is, I think, quite sizable, like compared to tournaments in Singapore, like the PBA regionals, I think first place you get close to like 2,000 or 5,000 USD. And then if you go to the actual uh, main PBA tour titles, uh, then like it's about 10K for like first place on those uh, actual PBA titles. Then yeah, so that's a lot more bigger competitions where you you go against the PBA pros. So in the regionals, obviously you go against pros as well. Like in one of his regionals, he actually uh fought against uh Jacob Butrov, which I think he lost to. But I think everybody knows Jacob Butrov in this channel and so, so on and so forth. So in this particular vlog, actually I'm not gonna play it. I'm gonna link it in my video description. So. 220 average bowler here is trying to get this release. He's trying to develop the so-called the PBA one-handed release, where the fingers on the downswing, as shown by Mike Fagan, the Mike Fagan uh video here, is in the inside of the ball. Then as it releases, it goes behind and to the outside. So in my opinion, as a coach in Singapore, we, we don't really like teach specifically this release to get the fingers on the inside but we do teach to have to, to get the fingers to stay on behind the ball rather than going around the ball because staying behind the ball actually gives you a lot more leverage and power as you can see by this is the back view of Cortez, Cortez Shanks which is like um, a youth US bowler in uh, United States but he's also going into PBA tournaments he's had some recent success in PBA tournaments and so on, and then you can see this is uh, EJ Tackett, right? And you see that his fingers is actually behind the ball during release. So we do teach that you want to get a ball, be your fingers behind the ball during release. So 220 average bowler is actually struggling with it because he says that during his release, his fingers tend to get on the outside. Maybe uh, I think there's a clip where he shows it here. Like on the back view, it's pretty good. And then when it goes to the release point, you can see that 220 average bowler here gets his fingers around the ball, on the side of the ball. And it gets even more obvious as you play it. So maybe I uh, play a little bit. Here, play it. Okay, in this part, he's just talking about his. Yep. So here at release, okay, it's really small. It's at the bottom of the video, but during release, his fingers is on the right side of the ball rather than behind the ball during release. And there's something that he wants to change. He's, he, in this video, he's talking about his progress, like doing self-training, like he's making some progress toward, uh, towards it. And in the video, he talks about he doesn't understand why his body is doing this, why his body is actually is turning around at the top of the backswing. So the exact part that he's struggling with is that during the backswing, the initial downswing, he gets his fingers behind the ball, which is good. But what he struggles with is that at the top of the swing, when his ball is coming down, you can see here, his hand does a little bit of a turn and he starts to go around 
the ball to the outside, to the right side of the bowling ball, instead of staying behind the ball. So this is the start of his uh, problems, right? So he, he's saying in this vlog, he doesn't really understand. And when he actually he when he actually tries to simplify it, like by you no know, throwing backup shots and stuff like that, and doing like a three-step drill, he actually gets more progress. Like he actually is able to make his fingers stay behind more. But when he does his full five-step drill, he this one he's showing like some progress, right? He's getting his fingers behind it. So when he does his full five-step drill, he's not able to get it to be that consistent. Oh, uh, this this one is actually doing a backup shot. So he's actually doing backup shots as training and so on. And you can see that here, after the backup shot, in this shot he gets to he repeats his same problem again. He gets to the right side of the bowling ball during release. His fingers get to the right side of the bowling ball during release, right? Because uh, the bowling like center bowling ball is here. So his objective is he wants to stay behind the ball. So he doesn't really understand why he's doing it. He has some progress when he simplifies it. Uh, let me be. Let me see whether is there a part. Yeah. So when he shows drills where he just does a one step drill. When he does a one step drill, he actually makes more progress and his fingers stay behind the ball. Which is what he wants. So you can see here he slows it down for us. At this particular moment, when he does a one step drill, just swinging the ball a little bit and then just re focusing on the release. He actually manages to get his hand, his fingers behind the ball, which is what he's trying to work towards for his full five-step approach. And he has a really nice release, right? So during the release, obviously he he turns he turns his hand and fingers to the outside, and he follows through, and he gets that nice, powerful PBA release, a nice uh, skid skid uh, skid hook roll action into the pocket, which is what he's going for. So my belief is by analyzing his form, what he is struggling with right now could be his swing direction. So 220 average bowler here actually has a very unique um, start of his ball placement. So the ball placement, to, to let the regular folks understand, ball placement is the part where when you're holding the ball here and during the second step or the end of the second step, you place your ball into the beginning of your swing. So you place a ball into the swing, that is what we call the ball placement. So during his ball placement, 220 bowler, 220 average bowler actually, or I just call him 220 for short, right? So 220 actually does a pretty unique thing that he does a very minimal ball placement. He actually starts swinging the ball like back almost immediately. Yep, you can see that he doesn't do much of a ball placement. Let's try and do a slow motion of this particular view, right? So he actually has a very small ball placement motion, just this little bit of a hump, and then he begins to draw his backswing back immediately. So I see his problem here. My, I believe what is his problem is actually that his backswing is not in line with his target because his target is actually around here. He's trying to send it around to the break point, probably, yeah, probably around here. And if you look at his backswing, his backswing is actually, let me use a thicker one. Nope, not this. His backswing is this one. Maybe I can use a different color for his backswing. Let's use blue. His backswing is going in this direction instead of the red line. So you can see that his backswing is not aligned with his target because his target is the red, uh, the red line here but his backswing is the blue line and it's actually swinging from the inside to the outside. Whereby, ideally he should be swinging inside. So um, this is a problem with his ball placement. Because initially when he places the ball, he actually doesn't place it to be in line with his target. Like he's not placing the ball in this direction. If he's starting placing the ball in this direction, he should find it easier to have his fingers stay behind the ball. But when he actually places it in the direction that he's doing, what he has to do is at the top of his backswing, he has to manipulate his ball, has to twist his swing around and get his, like manipulate his swing in order to send the ball to the target, which we can see here. So you can see that at the top of his swing, here he actually slows down here. So at the top of his swing, he's actually doing a little bit of 
swing manipulation, right? He's actually twisting. So you can see here, he's actually twisting his wrist to the outside and he's going to like manipulate his downswing in order to send his ball to his target, which is the red line there. So he twists it around. Okay, so I was wrong on the red line. So let me just redo the red line. So his target line is here, right? This is target line, but his swing. So let's go back. Okay, swing again, but his swing is in this direction. So I'm gonna use blue to illustrate his swing is uh, here. Okay, so let's draw a line in blue. So his swing plane is in this direction. So I don't think it's, is this good enough? It's pretty hard to illustrate on this freeze frame. Let me just go to a different freeze frame. Oh wait, I have to maximize it. Okay. So his backswing is in this direction. It's going in this direction, while by his target is the red line. So his backswing is uh his backswing is not aligned with his target line, which makes him want to manipulate this his swing at the top. And you can see that he's twisting his shoulders here during the slow motion. He manipulate he has to manipulate it in order to hit his target. So it all starts from the beginning of his ball placement. So if his ball placement was more in line with the red line, which is his target line, he will probably find it a little bit easier to keep his fingers to the back of the bowling ball. But in the vlog itself, he actually mentioned a very good, uh, a uh, very valid point as well, which is muscle memory, because he mentioned that he's been bowling this way for the past 14 to 15 years. So his muscle memory is so fixed that like, um, maybe during practice, he's able to do his ideal release, but when it comes down to pressure situations, his body will revert back to what it uh his muscle memory is and he will get all his bad habits again. So he will have to like consciously work on it. Like for a long period of time, I would say at least like three to six months in order to get rid of his old habits. And even then, when his like when his brain and when his body is under intense pressure, like in a competitive setting it might be possible for him to revert back to his old habits as well. So it's something like it's a it's a work in progress thing that he has to gradually, gradually work on. So I mean, even PBA pros actually struggle with it. Like when it comes down to pressure, uh, their bad habits in their physical game actually show up and it actually hampers, it prevents them from getting more success. So yeah, so I hope this uh, is useful for some of the one-handed bowlers. Right, if you are having trouble with having your finger stay behind the ball, um, check your ball placement direction and make sure that your the start beginning of your ball placement is in line with your target line, and that will mean your swing is in line with the target as well, and that should make it easier for you to have your finger stay behind the ball and hit your target. Okay, that's it from me. Uh, thank you very much for watching. So just a general reminder, uh, I am an active bowling coach for everybody interested to. No, to send me videos for review, you can actually send it on my Facebook page or you can like DM me on Instagram and then link some of your Instagram videos of your bowling releases. I can take a look at it. Uh, other, if you're interested to get direct lessons with me, if you're staying in Singapore, you can contact me in my, uh, my phone number, which is listed in the video description. You can WhatsApp me there for my rates as well as uh, how much I charge for a physical one-on-one -on -one lesson and stuff like that. All right, thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time.